But anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the next story. Yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next story. Okay, so we talked about this a couple episodes ago, how my birthday was kind of a bit of a bummer. But it got better. I went out with a couple friends that night, and then about two nights later, my friends Hank, Doris, and Wayne took me to the Trillium. If you're ever in Hood River, Trillium has great burgers. Stop by there. I prefer the Wrangler. I actually prefer them all. The uranium is very good as well. Anyway, so we're out, and there's one thing that I've noticed that when I'm talking to anyone considerably younger than myself, for whatever reason, two subjects always come up. Harry Potter and Firefly. I dislike them both. I think Firefly is completely overrated, and I think Harry Potter is lame. I've never read the book, never seen a movie. I will go over now very quickly everything I know about Harry Potter. Harry Potter gets touched by a dude on the forehead and gets a lightning bolt. His parents get killed. He ends up living in the closet with his uncle. An owl shows up, invites him to go to a school. He goes to the school. There he meets... A dwarf named Dobby and a gay wizard named Dumbledore. Then I know nothing that happens at all until Edward from Twilight gets killed during some sort of tournament and Dumbledore falls off a building. And then a guy named Voldemort, aka Tom Riddle, I know that for some reason, decides to fight Harry Potter. And they shoot magic at each other. And then Hermione turns black. The end. That's really all I know. I know stuff like, I know the names of the four schools, unfortunately. I know the names of the characters. I know, I mean, really, that's it. I know there's like something called a time turner, which is like, and there's stuff you can drink that turns you into the opposite gender. Very, very basic knowledge of Harry Potter. Now, You think, oh, that Hermione turns black thing, that was just some sort of flippant thing. But it's important to this conspiracy theory. This conspiracy theory started in 2005 by a Norwegian director named Nina Grunfeld. She was doing an interview for a Norwegian newspaper, and she claimed that J.K. Rowling did not write the Harry Potter books. She, She didn't write them. They were a manufactured series of books. This was her quote. But can a person be so productive and commercially successful in a media industry where nothing is left to coincidence? Is it possible that a person can write six thick books that are translated into 55 languages and sell more than 250 million copies in less than 10 years? Is it probable that the stories then get filmed and commercially exploited to a degree seen here without any well-thought-out strategy or highly professional players behind them? Is it possible that J.K. Rowling exists? Well, who do they think they're kidding? Not me. She thinks that J.K. Rowling is an actress that a basically a group of marketing executives hired a bunch of writers to crank these books out. They hired a face with a story. She's a young woman. She's a single mother. She's dirt poor. And she's sitting at the train station one day. The train is late. She comes up with the idea for Harry Potter. She ends up writing notes on little pieces of paper while she's sitting at cafes. She creates the first three chapters of the book, goes to the publisher, they buy it. It becomes the biggest book series of of all time. That's the official story. Nina's pushback on that is, and this was interesting, so the first part of that, you're like, well, you know, I guess it's possible to write seven books in 10 years, and it's just like every book's phenomenal, has this great marketing rollout, and so on and so forth. And the movies are super successful as well. Her pushback is Nancy Drew, the author of Nancy Drew, never existed. That was also a huge series. Each book was written by a group of writers. So they wrote the books, they just had one name, that was the series. So she goes, there is precedent for this as well. The Defense... They, you know, obviously when this, when Nina said this stuff, people started going, what? That's ridiculous. They talked to this Norwegian translator. He worked on translating Harry Potter books. He says that no, the books, this was their defense. The books were definitely written by one author because if you look at the books, he sees a consistent weakness in Rowling's work. And he goes, a group of writers could not have the same weaknesses when they write. So basically the defense is, She sucks, and a group of people can't suck in the same way as just Rowling sucks. Now, again, I haven't read the books. They don't really appeal to me. I'm not a fan of fantasy magic. 
But anyways, the defense basically. And then the other defense is that's ludicrous. No, she did write those books. But is there proof that she wrote those books? Well, I mean, you know, unless we go through and find the notes and all that stuff. And the story makes sense on one level that you could see a marketing team say, hey, we we have this cool idea. We're just going to pay these young people to write these books. And J.K. Rowling will be this fictional character we created. However, the conspiracy theory didn't catch on. And Nina admits it's a conspiracy theory. She did, gave the interview in 2005. And that was it. It was just a little article in the back of a Norwegian newspaper that a couple other newspapers addressed as, look at how crazy this is. And that was it until 2011. Now, in 2011, The Simpsons did an episode called The Book Job. Now, I am still a huge fan of The Simpsons, and anyone who says the show ended in season 7 or season 9 or whatever, you're not watching the new stuff, and it is still really good. The Book Job is one of my favorite episodes. This is season 23. It's a good episode for two reasons. One, because it talks about the conspiracy theory that J.K. Rowling did not write the Harry Potter books. It's, It's obviously referencing her. So in the book job, Homer, Principal Skinner, Bart, Moe, and um, one of the sisters, one of Marge's sisters, gets together and they decide to crank out fantasy novels because now they know that the whole thing is fake. It's just a group of writers writing one series of books and they have a face for the novel. And so it takes this conspiracy theory and turns it into the plot. And the whole thing is set up. It's called the book job because it's set up like a heist. It's set up like a heist movie. They show them assembling the team and pulling off the con. It's actually, it's kind of like an Ocean's Eleven parody. It's a very, very funny episode. It's a very clever episode. And it talks about a conspiracy theory that up until that point was relegated to the back page of newspapers in Norway. It's one of those conspiracies that actually rings a little true. I first heard about the conspiracy theory. I worked backwards on this. I saw the Simpsons episode first and thought it was funny. And when you're watching it, you're thinking, that actually sounds fairly accurate. The whole episode is about the marketing teams that create these young adult novels. And they keep referencing this idea. And it almost feels, when you're watching it, you're like, that sounds so true. And, and James Fry, who wrote A Million Little Fibers, he was the guy who wrote that book that ended up being not true. He said it was a biography, not true. He started a company that would hire young writers who just are out of college, graduate school, to crank out novels. And I Am Number Four came from that workshop. It's not even a workshop, it's a job. You show up there, you you write for eight hours a day, you go home. And it was just full of people. I am number four. So we have proof that young adult novels are cranked out by teams of people. Twilight was four books. They're fairly... I read more of the Twilight. I read three of the Twilight books, none of the Harry Potter. But if somebody told me, no, that was actually also a team of writers, or Fifty Shades of Grey after the first one, it was a team of writers, it wouldn't shock me. Because at a certain point, the publishing company has invested money into you. So they may not just have an editor work on your stuff. They may have another writer come and spruce it up. Harry Potter is a phenomenon. No other young adult novel has its own version of a theme park. None of them have the level of video games. It would not shock me if the allegations are true. J.K. Rowling has not responded to these things. And you could say, well, yeah, who's going to respond to every conspiracy theory? Obama released his birth certificate. J.K. Rowling hasn't responded to this stuff. Not after the initial allegation, not after the Simpsons episode that I've seen, that I've been able to see at least. Here's the thing. This is one of those conspiracy theories where if it's not true, it's definitely possible. It's definitely possible. Now, let me go back, and this is where I think kind of the proof comes in. When I was saying about the, what I know about Harry Potter, I said at the end, Hermione, is that Hermione, whatever, becomes black. And I think this ties into the conspiracy theory. So uh, when they moved it to the play, they did a Broadway theater, it was, Hermione was portrayed as a black actress. And J.K. Rowling was like, yes, I'm totally fine with this decision. You know, it's 2016, everything's great. But we let's look at some other stuff that happened. In the Harry Potter movies, I found all this stuff when I was researching it. 
there were two young black kids who later in the movies, when they got speaking lines, were replaced by white people. There was a young actress named, not actress, there was a young character named Pansy Pinkerton or Pansy Parkinson's or whatever. She was played by a cute little young girl. And the rumor is, and there's a little bit of truth to this, J.K. Rowling hates that character so much it reminded her of all the girls that picked on her in school that she asked them to replace her with an ugly actress because she didn't want to see a cute girl being someone who reminded her of a bully. And they did. I don't think the girl that they replaced her with is ugly, but definitely not this cute little girl. You have... Dumbledore being gay, which J.K. Rowling was like, Dumbledore's gay. And now that they're doing the prequel movies, the director's like, eh, we're not really going to show that. And the fans are all upset. And J.K. Rowling's like, uh. You have Johnny Depp, accused wife beater, being in the prequel movies of Harry Potter, the Fantastic Beasts movies. And J.K. Rowling is a very big, like, proponent of, you know, women's rights. She's been brought to task for that. So from those little stories, I think you could say, and I think through J.K. Rowling's tweets and all that stuff, she's very social justice conscious. You know, racism and all that stuff, sexism is very in her consciousness. And yet she's supposed to also have tons of control over this franchise. And black people are being replaced by white people when they get speaking lines. That's ridiculous. Accused... Wife beaters are in movies that are based on her work that then she has to defend. She outs a character as being gay, but when someone else has control of it, they change that or they're not revealing that. If she and if she has all this power over this franchise, why can't she just say, no, I don't want these actors. I don't want these black kids to turn into white kids. That's racist. That's totally racist. You give the kids lines and they become white. So. Either she's this literary mastermind who's written the best-selling book series of the past hundred years. Or she's an actress who has no control and no say over what goes on in the stories. And you may go, well, Jason, Warner Brothers bought the movies. They can do whatever. And fair. That's fair. But it still doesn't jibe with the idea or the image that she has control over this franchise over the books, or over the movies, or some sort of input. Um, E.L. James, who did Fifty Shades of Grey, she was allowed on the set of at least the first movie. She went in with almost total control, creative control, and they she butted head with the directors and all that stuff. And that was the first time they didn't even know if that movie was going to succeed. J.K. Rowling apparently has all of this. She's this megastar. She has more money than the Queen of England, personally. She has like $900 million. She has all these homes. She's constantly talking about the social justice causes, but when the rubber meets the road, they're gone. So it could be one of two things. She's a hypocrite, only in it for the money, or she is an actress who can say whatever she wants, but the real power, the marketing team, the writers behind the scenes, they're the ones who are like, oh, J.K. Rowling's talking about refugees again, but we're not changing this script. These black kids become white. You go, Jason, if that's true, why did Hermione become a black person in the play? I don't know. Throw her a bone. But Hermione being portrayed by a black actress in the play was like, oh, my God, look at how progressive we are. But then there were two black kids who didn't have any lines. And then they became white and they had lines that you can turn Hermione into a thousand people. That's totally racist. That is so racist. I just found out about that tonight. The whole, uh, okay, anyways, I'm getting off topic. Let's wrap this up. I personally think it's very plausible that she didn't write those books. I'm not saying it's true. But I'm saying it's very plausible. I'm saying it's a conspiracy theory that... what What's the pushback on that? Oh, yes, she did. It's a conspiracy theory that makes sense. There's precedent for it before and other forms of the same genre. Recent precedents, we can never really prove that she wrote those books unless she, like, hands over handwritten notes and things like that. I I, I think if somebody came to me tomorrow and said, we have proof J.K. Rowling didn't write these books, then it wouldn't shock me. I think it would shock a lot of people. And Nina, to, 
to go back to her, Nina said, the only way this thing will ever be exposed is if J.K. Rowling admits she didn't do it because she's tired of living her life and or the writers who wrote the book come out. And again, the defense is, well, if she's an actress, why does she have all this money? Well, she doesn't. It's all an act. Just like when you see rappers walk around with $500,000 of gold chains on their necks in front of the Lamborghini, it's rented. So those houses exist, and she has a pretty big bank account, but everything else is fake. You know, it's not like she owns five houses. The company owns five houses, and she's allowed to live in one and travel to the other and things like that to keep the story going. So that's it. You can research this one. You're not going to find a lot, unfortunately. But maybe some people will be able to provide us evidence one way or the other. You could all, you know, I keep saying if someone told me that she wrote these, then I had proof that she wrote these, I'd believe that too. But as it stands right now, if someone asked me to bet $100 that J.K. Rowling wrote the Harry Potter books, I'd hesitate to take that bet. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.